So with all these different muscle response testing techniques, the physical ones, the nutritional ones, perhaps the most dramatic, and maybe the number one reason people refer to the Cone Health Institute is the emotional techniques, and primarily something called NET, which stands for Neuroemotional Technique. When people get it done, they say it's like six months of therapy in a minute, but it's not therapy. It has nothing to do with therapy, not that there's anything wrong with therapy. It's just different. It's based on what's called the physiology of emotions, not necessarily the psychology of emotions. Now, if we break it down and look at the reality of our bodies, our mind and our bodies are one thing. It's not some new agey kind of statement. If we alter your body, it's gonna alter your mind. Chiropractors have been doing that forever. If you alter your mind, it's gonna alter your body. That's what we're looking to do here. And so again, how emotions work is what you don't express, you'll repress till it expresses as disease or dysfunction. Uh, a famous uh, actor once said, I never get angry, I just grow a tumor, which means if I, don't, if, if, if I don't get it out, it stays in until it comes out as something ugly, either a health problem or behavior. So basically what it's based on is two separate sciences coming together, uh, traditional Chinese medicine that for the last 5,000 years has shown that different organs or meridians related to different emotions like anger, frustration, aggression, or things you'll see related to the liver, grief and sadness and yearning you'll see related to the lung, low self-esteem and hopelessness you'll see related to the pancreas or the spleen and on and on and on and on. And so uh, throughout these correlations, they've also coupled it with the observations of Ivan Pavlov. And Ivan Pavlov, we all know Pavlov from the famous Pavlov dog studies. Uh, Pavlov, what he did among many things is that he took these dogs and he strapped them down and he held meat in front of the dogs until the dogs drooled and then he started ringing a bell at the same time. So the dogs became conditioned to hearing the bell every time they saw the meat. So he was able to remove the meat and just ring the bell and the dogs would drool as if the meat was there. Now eventually the dogs reached something called extinction. It doesn't mean they died, it just means that they said, hey, what am I doing? Why am I drooling? It's just this old guy with a beard just ringing this bell. So they stopped drooling, except humans, humans drool their whole life away, right? We have all these metaphors for it, like he pushed my button, she really pulls my strings, you don't understand, they did it to me. All these different areas where we've given our power up to someone or something. And so this is a situation that happens with any and all of us. Now, um, we've been able to actually do this thing called neuroemotional technique and it could take hours to explain it and give it the justice it deserves, but I'm gonna just give you kind of the nutshell of how we explain it to patients when they come here, because chances are, if it's not one of the first things you get done when you come here, it's gonna be something you get done before you leave because we are emotional beings. And by the time people come here, it's one of the most common things they've uh, gone so long without addressing. Even if they've had therapy, even if they've been in counseling, even if they've done different kinds of holistic work, uh, it's so different to be able to access this depth of what's happened in our life and do it within an instant. So let's talk about some things that we need to understand before we do this. Okay, there's four things that we need to understand so we get a better depth of kind of how and why this works. Okay, number one is your body never lies. I've done this testing for over 31 years. I've probably done it over 100,000 times. I've never seen one wrong. We're gonna find out something specific about your body. We're gonna find out what's triggering you in your life today, and then we're gonna trace it back to what's called the significant emotional event. The first thing that ever happened in your life when you were two or five or 12 or whatever, where you couldn't express it, but you held it inside and you buried it, and then now we've been just playing things like a broken record ever since, and it's constantly getting triggered, and there's a trigger in your life these days that had you come in with whatever health issue you're having. So your body never lies, that's number one. Number two, emotions have no logic. If emotions were logical things, we'd just think about our stuff and get over it, because we'd figure it out, never have a health problem, never see a doctor, because we just figure our stuff out. But we can't do that because emotions are emotions, they have no logic. Number three, what we're dealing with is emotional reality. It's not always historical fact. It's our perception of what we thought happened when we were two or five or 12 or whatever. For example, let's say mom's pushing baby in a shopping cart. She goes down the aisle. She goes, hey, I'm gonna get some tuna. So she's going down the tuna aisle, but she's distracted because she sees, oh, my favorite crackers. I forgot about the crackers. 
So she walks over to get the crackers. Baby looks left, looks right, sees no mommy. Baby starts crying. Mom walks back in literally two seconds and sees her baby crying. Mom's reality is, why is my baby crying? Baby's reality is, mom just abandoned me. Two total different realities, but each party may take whatever they thought happened that day to the grave and argue about it ever since. It's like, Portia, it's kind of like if I show you a quarter and you're looking at heads and I'm looking at tails and I say, what do you see? And you go, I see an old dead president. And you say, what do you see? And I go, well, I see a bird. Uh, looks like an eagle. We're both looking at the same thing, but what we're seeing is something completely different. And our friend filming us right now is going, both these people are crazy because I see ridges, right? All three of us are looking at the same thing and we're all arguing about what we see because our perspective is our own. It makes human dynamics so interesting, our judicial system so fantastic, and on and on and on, but we are eyewitness program that is. So we only see what we see, right? And that's our experience, whether it's real or imagined is irrelevant, okay? And the last thing is your mind doesn't even know the difference between something real or imagined or suggested to you anyway. So let's say I describe to you a lemon. I show you that lemon and I cut that lemon in half and I show you that pulpy part of that lemon. And I say, Portia, stick your tongue out. And let's say she does. And I take that lemon and I rub it back and forth on your tongue. And I take all the squeeze, all the juice till it's empty and all the juice is on your tongue. So if you keep listening to me, you'll have a tart taste in your mouth. And if you're watching this, you might as well. But there's no lemon in the room, just two people talking. So I can suggest something, create a physiological change in your body, completely change it. So you take all those four things, mush them together. That's every human being who has their own experiences. They meet other human beings and don't understand why other people don't think the way they do or can't understand them. Does that make sense? So what we're looking at is people's perspective. Now, NET, neuroemotional technique, is based on what's called the concept of okayness. Meaning like, our goal is not to fix anything, psychoanalyze anything, we're not gonna do the Dr. Phil thing and pretend to know everything about your life in three minutes. Basically, we're looking to uh, find out what your triggers are, cut that wire so when people push your buttons, you don't react anymore. So we're left with what's called this concept of okayness. Okayness, like okay, okayness does not necessarily mean being in agreement with something. Let's say something uh, horrific happened to you when you were younger that was inappropriate, okay? You're never really gonna be in agreement with that happening, but you gotta get okay with the fact that it happened. Otherwise, you're replaying it every day, over and over again, unconsciously in your mind, and you might as well have the thing happening to you every single day, which is not what we want. So people have this knowingness that they've, We've done work on some things or got over things, but a lot of times they've just dissociated or suppressed something. So NET helps us get at those things, shift your physiology, and the results are immediate. So it's really exactly how it works. So basically, let's kind of walk you through how we're gonna do that, okay? So let's say I'm gonna test to see how strong you are, and here we are testing this muscle again, okay? And that's strong. So. Um, there's a couple ways in. I could have you make a statement that you should believe or be congruent with, okay? Um, I'll, like for example, say your name is Portia, correct? So you're gonna say, my name is Portia. This is silly, but just do it. My name is Portia. And when she says it, it's nice and strong. Say, my name is Bill. My name is Bill. And it goes weak, because your brain's going, what are you talking yeah. about? That's not congruent, okay? Now, you can't use this as a lie detector test. You can't test your friend, your spouse, your children, and try and figure out what's going on with them. That's not the intent here. You're not gonna pick a lot of numbers with it. None of these crazy things that people say you can do, okay? We're just using it for biofeedback, okay? So let's say if you're working on something in your life that you want to have happen in your life. Like, what's a goal you have in, in your life? grandchildren to be to grow old and have grandchildren okay so let's do, let's do this so I don't know the dynamic of why you can or can't or if you're gonna or not gonna or the world's crazy right now who knows right but we're gonna make sure that you're at least okay with it so I'm gonna have you say I'm okay having grandchildren I'm okay having grandchildren so that's good say it's okay for me to have grandchildren it's okay for me to have grandchildren good say it's okay with others that I have grandchildren it's okay with others that I have grandchildren so that actually goes weak so again we're not going to sit and try and psychoanalyze why that is but that might be hey maybe my children those others right are not on the same page I am yet I don't know I don't know the story I don't know your background but I just and then what we would do 
is that we would trace that out. Okay, so why don't we do that now <laughs> since we're just doing this live, okay? So um, it's, we said it's okay with others that I, that I have grandchildren. So you're gonna say it again. It's okay with others that I have grandchildren. And it goes weak. So let's start with the most common place for us, which is your heart. Maybe one out of 10 times it's the heart. It could be the liver, it could be whatever, whatever. So there's different emotions related to the heart. So I'm gonna have you say those different emotions. Lost, vulnerable, abandoned, deserted, deserted. So we don't necessarily know why it's showing that uh, feeling deserted. Now there's two kinds of people deserted. You're deserted or somebody else is deserted, okay? So you who feels deserted, somebody else. So it's you in this case. So is there a story around grandchildren for you right now? Oh, look at how that happened. Yes. My mom did not want to be a grandma when I was first pregnant with my oldest. Okay. And you think it might have to do with something like that? Maybe. Okay. What's your mom's name? Portia. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're just saying her name makes you weak, just for the heck of it, hold your hand over the heart. Say it again. Portia. Okay, good. It's strong. Just put your hand on your forehead like this. Say it again. Portia. There it is. So it makes it strong. So. There is two little bumps on your head. They're really the frontal eminence, your frontal bone, if you're scoring at home. But they're, you know, uh, we call them emotional reflex points. What do we do all the time uh, when we get stressed out? We either do this or we do this. Our hands are always on it, right? What am I going to tell them? I can't believe I drove the car into the tree. You know, whatever. Does that make sense? So we're always doing something with it. We use it to help bring up this on a tape. So we're putting your body in the state where it thinks it's that age. Does that make sense? Um, but we're not there yet, okay? so. Um, can you think about, just for the heck of it, a time when you had a feeling that your mom didn't want grandchildren? Do you have that in your head? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of weak. Let me just ask, so what we say, is there a time earlier that when you or somebody else felt a similar way? Now in this case, that's the, what we call significant emotional event. So let me show you what we're going to do here. So you're gonna take one hand, you're gonna put it on your heart, like the Pledge of Allegiance. You can take this hand, you can put it over your forehead. This connects your emotions to the heart. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on three different areas that are related to the heart. It's like sequence for the heart. What you gotta do while we're doing this is I'm gonna have you take deep breaths in and out because emotions live in breath. That's why when people get stressed out, they go, <gasps> then they stop breathing, right? And then they do like yoga, tai chi, rebirthing, whatever they do to get themselves breathing again and now their emotions come out, okay? The other thing is I need you to do your best as you can. There's no wrong way to do it is imagine being with your mom and her expressing to you that she had zero or no interest or not the interest you were hoping for in her uh, being a grandmother. Does that make sense? Okay, breathe in and out. Keep thinking about it. Keep breathing, keep thinking about it. And again, keep breathing, keep thinking about it. Good, and we can see it shift. Now when this happens, you can feel it. People feel, the first thing they say, I feel lighter. It feels like I took a coat off that I didn't know I had on. Now, a lot of times we would have also, we didn't do it in this case, pre-tested a muscle related to the heart, it would be weak, and then we do this and now it's strong, okay? Or she might have had some issue related to her heart or the left side of, of her arm or something, it's heart related, okay? So let's test to see if we did any more than just tap on you. So I'm gonna push, think about grandma. I mean your mom, Portia, think about her. Okay, good, that's strong. Touch over your heart, that's strong. Yay. And now it's strong. So now there's congruency with it. So. We do this all the time. People come in where they're having blocks, whether it's uh, uh, happy family life, uh, uh, issues with relationships, issues in business, issues with finances, uh, issues with their connection to a higher self, whatever their thing is that they might have congruency issues with, okay? So that's really called NEAT, which is a branch of NET called Neuroemotional Anti-Sabotage Technique. We're actually clipping the wire so that when we're around this again or in this situation again, we're more likely to have success in that area, okay? There are no guarantees in life, the only guarantee is change. And after 31 years of doing this and seeing patients and people from around the globe on almost every continent, and I don't know how many languages, uh, the stories are endless about what happens for people with NET.